Hi, I'm Chris Nash. I'm a federal SE and a member of the SME Cloud team here at Forward Networks. And today I want to talk a little bit about S3 pre-signed URLs within AWS. For about the first five to 10 minutes, I'll give a brief overview of what they are and what their use case is, why they actually matter. And then for about 10 to 15 minutes after that, I will do some hands-on. First, I'll log into the console for one of my own AWS accounts to demonstrate how this feature works. And then from there, I will move on to the more specific application of this as it pertains to the Forward Networks platform. So first of all, let's lay some foundation here. What exactly is an S3 pre-signed URL anyway? Well, it's a method of securely granting access to objects in an S3 bucket with pre-existing credentials. Now that said, the person or the application, which in AWS speak is called a principal, that is accessing those objects, they're not going to be doing so using a standard type of authentication session like most of us are used to doing. Instead, what happens is that the principal is going to be provided with a time-constrained URL, which is authorized to directly access the objects in that S3 bucket. That URL is going to contain various pieces of information in it as well, which includes the username, which in AWS speak is called the access key ID. This URL is also pre-authenticated and pre-authorized, so to speak, for this access, which effectively makes those stages transparent to the person or the application accessing those objects. So why does this all matter? Well, let's go through a little bit of a scenario here. Now on the screen, you can see a, a diagram and say you have an object that you have uploaded to an S3 bucket. Now say when you created this S3 bucket in your AWS console, you created the bucket without modifying any of the default settings. And if you've ever done this, you'll know that this means that there will not be any public access enabled on that bucket. In other words, if you don't change any of the default settings, the bucket will be private when you create it. What that also means is that any objects in that S3 bucket can only be reached by an authenticated and authorized user. And here on this diagram, I'm representing this by this IAM admin user in the upper left corner. Now say that IAM admin would like to share an object that they uploaded into this private S3 bucket with someone else, but only on a temporary basis. And this other person is represented here in the lower left corner of the diagram. We, uh, we have this uh, unauthenticated masked man, if you will. So the thing of it is, how can we accomplish this? Well, for users that only require temporary access, there's essentially three ways that you would go about granting this most of the time, and they're all shown here on the diagram. The thing of it is, none of them are really ideal from a security perspective. Let me elaborate a little more. One option is that you can provide an existing AWS identity to this external user that only needs temporary access. We all know how huge of a security no-no that would be, though. Equally uh, wrong to do would be to give them their own AWS credentials because, again, remember this is only temporary access that is required to that object in the private S3 bucket. So that said, the third option, you could make that bucket public, but that's really kind of overkill because, again, it's temporary access. So with all of this taken into consideration, how else can we accomplish this? Well, a pre-signed URL is really the better way to go here. This is a much better solution. In this scenario, we've got our authorized IAM admin user here in the upper left corner once again. What they will do is they will request a pre-signed URL to be generated in S3 for the object access in question. And that would also include the required authorized credential as well as an expiry date and time. This temporary URL can then be provided to the principal, and in this case, once again, in the lower left-hand corner, we've got a user that under all normal circumstances would be unauthenticated. But what would happen is that with this pre-signed URL, for the amount of time specified when it was created, they would then be able to use that URL to access the objects in question. Now, just a little side note before we continue on, you can tell by looking at this diagram that S3 pre-signed URLs do support both put 
and get functions, but we're only going to be focusing on the get scenario here. So please do keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and log into the AWS console for one of my AWS accounts now, and let's take a look at how this is done. So here I'm logged into one of my AWS accounts, as shown here in the upper right corner, and I'm in the S3 part of the AWS console. And we can see that I've created a bucket here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this bucket, and let's look at the permissions on this bucket for just a second. Now you can see here that block public access is set to on. And the reason for this, as I hinted at earlier, is when I created this bucket, I didn't modify any of the default settings. So remember before that I clarified that when you don't modify any default settings when you're creating an S3 bucket, that means it's going to be a private bucket with no public access enabled. So that's what this is telling us here. And I've also gone ahead and uploaded an object to this private S3 bucket. Let me go ahead and click on that. And here we can see various properties about this object that I've uploaded. You can tell by looking at the file extension, uh, .jpg. This is obviously a picture file. Now, because I'm logged into the AWS console and I'm authenticated and authorized to do so, I can view this object simply by coming here to the upper right corner and clicking on Open. And you can see here, this is a picture of my current electric guitar. Pretty good looking instrument, if I do say so myself. Now that being said, again, I'm logged into the AWS console and I'm authenticated and authorized to do so. So that that's all well and good, but what about trying to access this object from the outside? Well, here we can see the exact object URL. So let me go ahead and copy this and let me mimic what it would be like from someone from the outside trying to view this object in my private S3 bucket. We'll paste that in. And as we can see, access is denied and it should be because again, this is a private S3 bucket. Now let's go ahead and create an S3 pre-signed URL so that we can share access to this object on a temporary basis. It's very easy to do. Here again, looking at the properties of the object that I uploaded into this private bucket, we can simply come up here to Object Actions and click on Share with a pre-signed URL. And I'm going to use a very short period of time that this URL will be valid. I'm only going to specify one minute before it expires. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on Create Pre-signed URL. Notice we're told that a pre-signed URL has now been created to access this object and it's been copied to the clipboard. So let's go ahead and make sure it works. We'll open a new tab in the web browser, paste in that URL that's in the clipboard. There we go, there's our picture again. And now I also wanna go ahead and paste this S3 pre-signed URL that's copied in the clipboard here in a window in uh, Visual Studio Code. And I wanna break down some pieces of this URL for just a second here. We're gonna put some of these items on separate lines. We don't have to break down the entire thing, but there are some very important aspects of this URL that I wanna walk through for just a moment. We'll get these on separate lines here. Okay, so what exactly is making up this pre-signed URL? Well, on this top line, we can see that this is lo the location of the object in question. Here under security token, this is what represents the authentication and authorization piece that allows this object to be accessed. And again, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but I wanna point out a couple of these because they are important to understand. First of all, this line that's labeled XAMZ date. This represents the date and time that I actually clicked on the button to generate the pre-signed URL. So here we can see the date and time is 2025-02-21, which is today's date. It is February 21st of 2025 at the time that I'm recording this video. And in Zulu time, we can see that it's 1948 30, which would be 7.48 p.m. and 30 seconds, again, Zulu time. Now, I'm on the east coast of the United States, so I'm going to need to take that back five hours. So for me, that would represent roughly 2.48 p.m. and 30 seconds, which would indeed be the time that I clicked on the button to generate this URL. The other thing to understand, uh, remember that when I generated this, I specified a very short timer of only one minute and that is reflected here in the XAMZ expires line. We can see that this is 
uh, reflecting a value of 60, and this is in seconds. So of course, 60 seconds, one minute. Now, as I've been elaborating on the various pieces of this S3 pre-signed URL, it's definitely been more than one minute. This was why I made it such a short duration, because now we want to verify that the expiration timer is working as intended. So to verify this, let me go back to the page in my web browser where I launch that URL. Let me refresh this page. Okay, so now we can see that this S3 pre-signed URL isn't working anymore. We can see access is now denied. The request has expired. Here we can see the time that it expired, and we can see represented on the server timeline, this is the time that I tried to access this object, which you can see is a couple of minutes past the expiration date and time. So everything looking good. Uh, this is working correctly as intended. So hopefully you're able to see now that using an S3 pre-signed URL is pretty easy, and it's a pretty effective and efficient way to grant op uh, access to an object in a private S3 bucket, again, for a limited period of time. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Chris, this sounds great, but what is the application of this to the Ford platform? Well, there's a direct application for this functionality. It relates to performing forward VM installs and upgrades. Now I'm talking about non-SaaS instances of the forward platform, so I'm talking about on-prem VMs. When you log into the Software Central uh, website, you may have noticed copy command buttons that are available for downloading OVAs or package upgrade files. Let me give you a visual of what I'm talking about here. So here I'm logged into Software Central, and my deployment is represented right here. Uh, I have a deployment that contains a VM that I use for testing purposes. And you're probably familiar with this, and you're familiar with these icons over here on the right-hand side. The first one is what you would click on to download the initial OVA. Now you can download this directly using this blue button, or you can use the white button to copy a download command. The same also holds true when you want to do an upgrade, which is what the second icon is for. And again, you can directly download the package file, or you can copy a download command. I'm actually going to go ahead and click on that copy command button for just a second. And I'm going to open a new window in Visual Studio Code, paste that in. I'll come back to that in just a second. Guess what happens in the background when you click on a copy command button in Software Central? Now, th this might be Captain Obvious here. You've probably already guessed. And you would be right, an S3 pre-signed URL actually gets generated. Let me go back to my uh, Visual Studio Code window here for just a second, and let me turn on Word Wrap here. And like I did before, let me actually separate some of the pieces of this URL that was generated when we clicked on the Copy Command button in the Software Central portal. And again, I'm not going to break down all of the pieces of this, but there are some things that are definitely important to recognize, and I will walk through those. So first of all, at the top, we can see there's a curl command here that essentially says, hey, go and grab me this file from this location. And similarly to when I was breaking down the URL example from within the portal, we can also see here uh, as a result of clicking on that copy command button to get this S3 pre-signed URL. Here we can see the date and time that it was generated. And again, this represents February 21st of 2025 at uh, 1953 and 34 seconds Zulu time. Again, I'm on the east coast of the U.S., so that represents roughly 2.53 p.m. Uh, my time here on the east coast. And the other thing I want to talk about for just a second, it's important to recognize the expiration timer, which again is shown here on the XAMZ expires line. And again, this value is represented in seconds, 1800 seconds or 30 minutes. What this means is that when you click on a copy download command button in Software Essential, you have 30 minutes from the time that you clicked on it to download the file. Now, of course, it's not a big deal if that timer expires, you can simply, of course, come back into Software Central and click on that copy download command button to get a new S3 pre-signed URL, which will, of course, be valid for another 30 minutes. That concludes this presentation, and I hope that this has been insightful for you. Thank you for viewing.